And we are here in the post game show after the Colorado Kraken pull off probably the biggest upset in the NBA this year the expansion Kraken sweep. Last year's semifinal of Southern Exposure 25 23, 23 and 19. We are joined left to right by Colorado's most experienced player, starting libero JJ Rosa and middle blocker Matt Gagner. Matt, we'll start with you. Is you, know, you are newer to the league compared to JJ and uh, have had a chance now to kind of see what the NBA is about. For you now to be able to get your feet wet, how are, are you feeling about playing at this level? I'm loving it. I'm loving it a lot. Um, I have a lot of friends on the opposing teams, like Texas Tyrants. I know people on Team Freedom. I have a lot of people from Untouchables last year. I've played with them before. So the experience level kind of feels around the same, uh, being from Chicago. but. Overall, I'm just finally happy that I can break into the league and start doing stuff here. Well, JJ, you've been doing stuff with the NBA, and you know when a big win is there. What you saw today from your squad, you have to be incredibly proud. Talk about just the emotions after this win. Uh, for me, it was uh, really emotional because Southern Exposure beat me in the quarterfinal last year when I was playing the Untouchable. So I was ready to this match. I was kind of like prepared. I watched every single game before this one so I could prepare my team, my teammates. Uh, I'm happy because they allow me to help them because I'm, I'm maybe the most experienced player in, in the team. So I'm, I'm very happy to like this week going two from two. Yeah, and that's the big thing. Is you, I think it was expected, perhaps, that if, if there was a win you were going to get this weekend, it would have been against Seattle. I don't think anybody looked at the calendar and circled, oh, this is a win for Colorado. For you guys to come out, just talk about the confidence that's going to help going forward. You still have six matches in the regular season after this. So, uh, looking forward to our schedule. The next event is going to be tough. It's going to be Stinger and Stunners. Uh, we've been prepared for that in the whole season. Uh, I know that we have out-of-state players, so we've been traveling to like keep bonding and having like a good, a good uh, chemistry. So I think uh, knowing that we have six more games, I think we're prepared more to at least have two or three wins because we, we want to be in the top three till we, we can get to quarterfinals. And you guys are now two and two and you're mad and have become a factor all of a sudden. You don't really expect with an expansion team to be in the playoff picture, but you know, through two events, you guys are certainly making some noise. And how much pride do you have knowing that with such low expectations, you guys have exceeded that so far? Yeah, definitely. I think we have a lot of pride. I don't think a lot of people in the league look at us as a threat, but I mean, I think we definitely proved it today. Look, mark us on your calendars too, because we, we do want to go play. We want to go play you guys and we're out to win. Same as every other team here. We just want to play well, we want to do well, and we want to win. It's a big prideful moment for all of us because I know a lot of people didn't think today was going to be a 3-0, and it was a statement game, and we did it. it Obviously, Colorado, the area, it, it, it's certainly a growing volleyball community. Um, yes, you guys are new to the block, but the sport is not new to the Rocky Mountains. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's the... the the discussion around volleyball in Colorado right now, knowing that they now have a pro team that they can uh, you know, look up to and come support. A lot of people are really excited about it. They're coming up to us, um, especially club parents. Uh, I'm coaching club volleyball at Front Range right now. And the parents are super excited to see that their coaches are still playing. And they're still playing and there's a future for their kids to also come play, even after college. And it's not just like older kids, it's younger kids too. We're starting to get that established. Uh, state final for Colorado for high school boys, the second ever, just finished up. And it was, it's great to see now it's progressing more and more. Boys are loving the sport and they're coming out to Colorado and they want to watch us. It's awesome. Obviously one of our most beautiful parts of the country as well. And speaking of beautiful, my goodness. Adding Alvaro Hidalgo to the lineup has absolutely changed what, what this squad is capable of doing. JJ was nice enough to be our designated translator in the, uh, in the uh, after the match interview as uh, Hidalgo was, of course, our man of the match with an incredible line. 18 kills, 28 attempts. He has not had an error in, in now two matches with Colorado and isn't it? You said he hasn't had an error. Has not had an error. That guy's error. good at volleyball, huh? He, he he's, good. he's not bad. He's, he's good. got himself a future. I know that. Uh, do you talk about how he's been working from last season to this one? Uh, 
I know he's my friend, but I know that he had a little struggle when passed at Serb Receive, and he's been working with that. And then working with the national team, working playing in Spain, the professional league. That guy worked so hard to be like better than last year, way better than last year. He served the way he, he blocked, he can swim, he can defense. I think that uh, when I talked to Jonathan that he wanted to come to play with us, uh, we saw like, we have to take advantage of that. And he say, both say yes, so I think I'm happy. And the team is happy as well to have him with us. Now, and if we're going to maybe institute my suggestion, the uh, most improved player in the NBA, I think Alvaro absolutely needs to be in the conversation. So, uh, finally, you, know, you guys, after being in Seattle, you know, had two days to prepare for this one. What was the most important thing that you needed to see from Colorado from your squad today that you did accomplish, that you were talking about coming in? Comparing last match to this one, I think we, we keep the same energy. Uh, we improve our block. We blocked this uh, this week and today we blocked so good and our pass was, uh, our service was good. Mm -hmm. I think if we keep doing uh, our li uh, pass lineup good, good surf from this guy, can you travel when he's floater? A lot better uh, than last game, huh? I think we're, uh, we have tall guys, big guys. So if, I, like I said to it, sometimes to him or Oliver, just put the ball. We gotta do a great job blocking our defense. So that helped us to win the today matches. And with the blocking, you were matched up with Uchenno Foja, obviously, you know, he's a big, big guy. And, yeah. But you were winning a lot of those battles, you know, how were you able to make that work? He jumps so high. All I did was kind of like, let's see if I can get fingertips on the ball. I rely on JJ, anyone in the back row, they can get it. Like, job isn't to, like, get a block kill for me, set up the defense, let's get a kill in offense. And Alvaro's going to go kill the ball anyway. So. <laughs> Works out well over there. Actually, we had to add that uh, I love that uh, Jonathan like rotate our three outside, Rahul, Trenton, and Jose. They did a great job. Yeah. So uh, I'm happy that we can have those guys back in up for any reason. Yeah, that was important because with Alvaro doing his thing, it allowed other guys to get touches and get some reps and get experience. And it paid off today for the Colorado Kraken as they were all over. Southern exposure in three sets and the crack and improve to two and two on the year. Special thanks, JJ Rosa, Matt Gagner here in the postgame show. Colorado completes the weekend two and up. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Love Mother's you. Day, Mom. Love you.